Okay, hello all together. It's 14 o'clock in Central European time. So I would like to start with our webinar. I, uh, you're very welcome to this webinar. And this day, I want to show you how to optimize your packing pressure profile to minimize your warpage. There will be one example where I will show two different approaches with Varimos to optimize the warpage. Okay, uh, one word. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the F&A section. Um, there we will see the questions. Some questions I will answer immediately if, if it is uh, the best time to answer it. Uh, but most questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. Okay. So here you see the example. And with whatever example, when whenever you start, usually you start with the usual cut mold calculation. In this case, it is just a simple calculation with standard process parameters. So just a quick trial to find out how the part behaves. And here we see the warpage of the part. Um, we see a significant distortion in this area. It's about 0 0.5 millimeters. And we can see in this picture that the part is bending a lot and that the walls at the side uh, move a little bit to the inside. So this area, which should be connected to another part, doesn't fit that well. So there needs to be, uh, we need an improvement there. Um, this part is made of ABS without any fibers. So the things I will show today work uh, best if you don't have fiber reinforcements in the part because uh, the fiber reinforcements have a very large effect on warpage uh, and this approach works better for unenforced materials. Uh, in the picture, it's not visible, but the gating point is over here. And yeah, so that's our first result. After you see your result, it's important to understand what's the reason for the warpage. And usually the wall thickness is a big help to find out why the part is moving. This part has a large area which has a wall thickness of three millimeters. And here on top of the part, there is a small circumferential groove, which creates a very thin area. In total, they are three millimeters thick, but the gap between leads to two small ribs, in fact, which have a thickness of one millimeter. And of course, this area of one millimeter freezes much quicker than other areas. And this will have an effect on our result. On the other hand, if you see on this picture, in this area, the wall thickness is even bigger than this area. And the wall thickness leads to the following result, which is the um, volumetric shrinkage. And an important side note, the volumetric shrinkage is not the same as the shrinkage which is compensated in the mold. Both of them have the same reason. Both of them depend on the shrinkage of the material. Plastics, when they cool down, they get smaller. There's no doubt about that. But this shrinkage is in all directions. It's a volumetric shrinkage and the shrinkage for the compensation is in the surface direction. So the, please don't mix that up. If you see the, uh, the values, of course, they are much bigger for this result than for the usual shrinkage. Okay, what do I want to say with this result? If you take a look here on the thin area, you see that the shrinkage here is very small. The reason is the material is freezing very early, 
while it is under packing pressure. So all the shrinkage gets compensated by packing. So there is not much packing which is left after the part gets ejected. On the other hand, the thick area takes longer to cool down and it gets pressure, but it is the pressure is not working as long as it might be needed for that area. And on top of that, if you imagine that this area is freezing down more or less completely inside the mold, and inside the mold, it is under, um, under movement restriction. It can't get smaller because it's blocked by the mold. So it will only get thinner, but it will not get shorter. This area instead partly um, cools down inside the mold, but mostly cools, out, uh, cools in outside the mold. And when it's outside, it can move in all directions. It can get thinner, but it can also get smaller. That's the reason why the thick areas are pulling together more than the thin areas. And with this information, if you then think about the movement we see at the part, which can be seen here, then it's easy to understand that this area is thick, it shrinks together a lot. The thin area doesn't shrink that much, so it pushes in the other direction and this creates the movement here. So the part bends over and in this view you see this area pulls together, this area pushes against, so it moves like this. So that's important to understand. And with this information we can think about how to improve the part. So, of course, one possibility would be to increase the packing time, to have a longer packing in the area which needs more packing, and we can um, take a longer cooling time to have more cooling inside the mold with mold restriction. So, there's just one additional test with a very long packing time. Of course, the effectivity of packing gets gets less over time, but of course this, this is long. Um, the pressure itself has the same height and the cooling time was longer. And we see the volumetric shrinkage has, has, a, it has a very high impact on it. We see the behavior is completely different. If you take a look at the scale, it's the same. And we see here that the thin area nearly is the same, yeah? So uh, it was not affected by the longer packing, but the area here, especially close to the, to the gating point, is um, nearly overpacked. So it's, uh, we see a very high effect. But what is the effect on the warpage? This can be seen here. On the left side, we, th we see the, the first result with 0 0.5 millimeters of, of warpage. And on the right side, we see the new calculation where the warpage is just a little bit less. Uh, so the, the maximum is just a little bit less. The total behavior is much different. We see that, for example, this sidewall moves a little bit to the outside while before it was moving to the inside and yeah, we see many differences in some areas it looks better but in total it's not that good we see an effect but it's not good enough especially if we take a look from this view we see that of course the part is bending less but this area is still moving moving so we uh, we need um, a better result here and that's what we will try to do next okay now we will do two different approaches we will have strategy one where we try to optimize the packing pressure profile while focusing on warpage result and the second strategy is 
to do the same variation, but we will focus on volumetric shrinkage results. And both of them, uh, there we will have a variation of the packing pressure. I will show soon how that looks like. But here we try to create warpage as small as possible. And here we will try to find something where the uh, shrinkage is as uniform as possible. Okay, for the first strategy, we need to define points on the part where we measure our result. If you have seen Varimos before, then you might know how this works. You need to work with a measuring device and define some measurements. And there we try to measure the movement of the part. We want to have that the movement is zero. So that will be our set point. And we need to define um, a tolerance where I chose 0 0.1 in, in both directions. The points are placed on the edge because I want to focus on the movement on the edge because this is the area where the part gets connected to another part. So this is important for me here. Okay, so that's strategy one. Strategy two looks like this. Here we focus on the volumetric shrinkage and here also different points need to be defined. This works in the um, user-defined quality criteria. There you can select points and you can select the result you want to measure. In this case, it's the volume shrinkage. And there, of course, you also need to define a target value and a tolerance. For the target value, I chose 1.8%. Now you might ask yourself, why did I take 1.8%? And of course, this question is difficult because this might be different for every different material. But when I work with, with a standard pressure on this part, I get shrinkages which are already around 1.8%. So that's why I chose this one. On the other hand, I also calculated the the small so-called shrinkage plate. It's a small test object where you can measure shrinkages of the material. And when I fill this and pack this with standard parameters, I also get to a value closely about 1.8%. Of course, if you take a different value, the result might be different. But in this case, I chose this one. And you might have noticed that there are many points which are chosen. Some of them are even not visible because they are behind that wall. Um, we need to take many points here because we need to represent all areas of the part. We need to represent thin areas, we need to represent thick areas, and we need to also represent areas which are far away from the gate and areas which are close to the gate because Thin areas are freezing quickly. They behave different than the thin areas and close to the gate. They get a longer packing usually. So they also are affected by that. So that's why there are so many points. Okay, after that, you need to define the variation itself. So the parameters or variables, which may be different and up to version 16, it was already possible to vary the different pressures. So you can define a baseline for the pressure. So for example, this point number one has 350 bars, but for the variation, there's the definition that it can be 200 bars higher or lower that is represented by these bars. There's also one, but you can't see it here. Yeah, and that is defined for the six points, one, two, three, four, five, six. This one is constant. And these two are connected to each other. So it is defined in a way that if this one is getting higher, this one is getting higher as well. But that's already possible in version 16. With version 16.1, which will be delivered soon, um, you can also define a variation 
for the time of these points here. And in this example, this point may be a one second earlier or one second later, and the same for this point. And this is very useful for this procedure because we don't know already how long we want to have a certain pressure. Um, and this is very helpful here. It is possible to define that for each of these points separately. This will lead to a very high number of um, uh, variation possibilities, but in this example, I try to keep it quite small. The only point which is not allowed for the time uh, change is the first one. Of course, it must be at zero. There's, it's not possible to change that. The last point could be changed too. This would make the total packing time longer or shorter. Um, I didn't use it here, but it would be possible. And yeah, uh, before 16.1, it was possible to vary the complete packing time. That's still possible, but it cannot be combined with this procedure. Okay, but that's the way I tried here. Okay, I see there's a question. Um, okay, there's the question. Why do you set an initial rising pressure profile? As a rule, the mass should be brought into the cavity as quickly as possible in order to avoid internal stresses caused by the flow of an increasingly cold mass. Um, yes, the general rule is to apply a big pressure early, but we will see later that the result here is different. So uh, after a while you will see that, and then I will try to explain the reason for it. Um, okay, then after you defined your uh, parameters, you need to define how they should look in detail. Um, of course, the, this large uh, table looks quite complicated, um, but in fact, you get, a, you get a suggestion from the software and this is mostly done automatic. You just need to select one of uh, the existing plans. And here I just made two examples about how the pressure profile looks like. The number four has, for example, starts with a high pressure, then gets to a low pressure. And for example, this time is early and this time is late, while this example starts with a low pressure um, with different switchovers and then has a high pressure. All of these are calculated separately and automatically and will be calculated um, for the final result. We will see that soon. So here for strategy number one, that was with focus on warpage. This is the result we see um, in the end. On the left side, we see how Varimos shows the settings you should use. And the sliders represent the settings of the different uh, variables. And this is how it looks like in the in a picture. You know, it starts with a low pressure and then it's getting up and down again. And this is an example about how Varimos shows the result for the different points where we have measured our result. So this is the warpage on one of the side walls. And if all the parameters are on the starting value, which is in the middle, we have a warpage of 0 0.17 millimeters, which is out of tolerance. So this is why it's red and it's not inside the blue area, which is our tolerance. And the tolerance was defined as zero plus minus 0 0.1. And with this setting, it should be inside tolerance. It should be very close to where it belongs. This is why it's shown green. Um, of course, this one 
it's shown for each result separately. And I don't want to show that all of them here. It is just too much for a webinar, but um, maybe you already know how it looks like. Okay, so that's strategy number one. Let's see how this looks in a picture. On the left side, you see the warpage result of the part with the new packing pressure. And we see that the maximum got down to 0.17 before it was 0.5. So there's a big improvement. This area is still the area which has the largest movement, yeah, but it's better than before. And also this area is uh, still has a movement. And in this example, we only focused on warpage. We didn't measure the shrinkage. But in the same time, if we take a look at the shrinkage, at the volume shrinkage for this setting, we see that it is much uh, more even than before. Of course, there are exceptions. Yeah, this area has a high shrinkage, but we didn't focus on that point. So this is why it didn't get improved. Um, we see, for example, that here is an area where maybe the shrinkage is a little bit less than in the other areas, but we see the gap here is much closer to the shrinkage on the other areas. Only this thin area around maybe could have used a little bit less packing. Um, yeah, but we see as a side effect, shrinkage got more even, even though we focused on warpage. Let's take a look at the result if we focus on shrinkage. Again, we see the values in a numerical form. And this is how it looks like in a diagram. And again, we see the curve is not the same. So the result is a little bit different, but it's quite close to the first one. Yeah? It starts early with a, a small pressure, then it's raising and falling down again. And here we have an example for this result. So this is a point which is uh, in the middle of the part on a thick area. In the first setting, it had a shrinkage which, which was too big. And with the new setting, it got smaller. It got nearly into tolerance. Yeah, yeah so this is uh, another example where it might maybe didn't work so well as in the first example, just to show that results can be different, of course. Okay, let's see how this looks like in a picture. Let's start on the right side where we see the volume shrinkage and we see the area, especially the area here, um, the result looks very even. I don't see very much um, areas which are different to this color. So the only exception is maybe again uh, this area in between. So the reason why this that didn't get that much better is I focused on placing the points on top and maybe I should have placed some of them a little bit lower to represent that area. But uh, we see that it also worked very good. Um, yeah, and even though we focused on shrinkage, we also get an improvement of the warpage. The result is not as good as the result seen before at 0.2, but it's still much better than the starting calculation. Yeah. Um, and the area which is moving is still the same. So we have this area and this area, which still make uh, the biggest problem but we see the improvement. Okay, let's compare the two, two diagrams. And of course they, they look quite different on first sight, yeah? but they have some similarities, of course. Both of them agree upon starting with a low value. Both of them agree on raising the pressure after a certain time, and then both agree to go down in some kind of way. So 
they have a very strong similarity then, of course. And the reason for that is that when, uh, when you start with a, of course, you need to fill the part completely and there you might need a, a pressure which is higher. But here in this case, the, the filling pressure is not as high. So we can start with a, with a low pressure. And this is the pressure which has the strongest effect on the thin areas. So while the thin areas freeze down, they don't get pushed that much, so they can shrink more. And so they will, uh, they can get smaller later, uh, which um, reduces the stresses that we have in that area later. And after the thin areas are frozen, if then the pressure is raised, then you only affect the areas which are still warm, which are the thick areas. And then the pressure is going down because clo areas close to the, uh, to the gate usually are longer in effect of the pressure. So they need to be reduced in the pressure that the uh, areas close to the gate don't get overpacked. This is why it gets down. And the variation started with a more or less even, uh, even level. So uh, without the, the information that this might happen, we got to the result that this should be useful for our use. Of course, when you know that in front, uh, in the beginning, you can already start your variation with this information and start with a low pressure and do some kind of fine tuning for this. That was not done yet, but it would be possible if you know that in the beginning. Okay, here is an, an also an additional result, which is new in version 16.1. It is called sensitivity, sensitivity analysis. Um, and this describes in a diagram how a result, in this case, the warpage in the corner we have seen, how it is affected by certain parameters. In this case, for packing pressure number three, which is this one, uh, this one here. Uh, sorry, this one. Uh, yeah, so which is low in all of these. Yeah, And it shows how the result gets changed by this parameter. And for example, here we see if we would have used 600 bars for that pressure, our result would be here. So we would have a high warpage of closely, of nearly 0 0.6 millimeters. But if we use 200 bars, it gets smaller and closer to our um, nominal value, which we want to have. And the same is true for the volumetric shrinkage in the same area. If we reduce the pressure there, the shrinkage there gets higher and closer to the value where we want to be in the end. Yeah, so with this um, result, it's easier to understand how certain uh, results behave. And yeah, there you can find information which make it easier for you to understand the behavior. Um, there are, and this diagram exists for each combination of quality criteria over packing pressure, uh, over parameter. Yeah, so, but you will see that uh, if the new update gets delivered to you. Okay, and what I want to show here is both results agree about that they want to have a low pressure in the beginning, and then later it can get higher. Okay, as a summary, I just want to show again uh, the three pictures of the warpages all together. And we, you see we started at 0 0.5 millimeters and after different optimizations, we get to 0 0.2 and 0 0.17. And yeah, that would be our final result. Yes, of course, uh, you might have the question that 
um, which way you should use. In fact, you can use both of them. Um, I think it's better to use the first way because it's a direct measurement of the effect we want to see. We want to optimize the warpage. So of course it makes sense to measure directly the warpage. This strategy is maybe just in addition um, because it explains the reason why the warpage gets better or gets worse. And with this one, you can maybe get a better understanding about the behavior of your part. And maybe you can explain better to your customer why it is necessary to do certain changes at the part. For example, it could be possible that different packing pressures that you don't uh, have an effect on some areas. Maybe you have some thick areas which are very far away from the gate, which you can't affect that much with the packing pressure profile. Or um, yeah, maybe you just don't find a good solution. And maybe then you can um, explain better to your customer why the part needs to be changed. Yeah, so if you, with understanding, usually you get to a better solution. 